I embarked on writing this book, it was first and foremost for my family, and I was hoping that my family would like it. What has been very a very pleasant surprise is that people outside my family are not just reading it, but actually enjoying it and finding it informative. It's giving them a window into a time and a place they really didn't know anything about. Czechoslovakia had some visibility around the world. Prague is a world-class city that's very well known for its composers and its artists and its architecture and its writers. Um, Slovakia, there's been very little written about. And so part of what I was trying to do is to make a contribution to the knowledge of Slovakia specifically. It's done in a way that's a little bit unusual. It's a very first person memoir narrative, but it's interwoven with lots of historical references. My father had a very happy, happy childhood. Uh, he loved growing up in Bratislava, but as he became a teenager and sort of started coming of age, he, he realized um, that th his life was very limited. And he actually, in 1968, with Alexander Dubček's reforms, which became known as the Prague Spring, he had the chance to, to experience the Western side of Europe. He went um, to Norway and then to Germany and saw that here is, here is a world which he was not allowed to experience before and it had opportunities that he simply had no access to when he was home in Bratislava. And so he became discontent with life in Slovakia, life in Czechoslovakia. And when he decided to live outside the country, the authorities said he had to renounce his citizenship. That was a pivotal moment for him. He said, if that's the case, then I am no longer going to be a Czechoslovak citizen. And he started an American family with an American wife and raised kids who became completely American kids. Uh, did not teach them to speak Slovak, did not introduce them to Czechs or Slovaks outside of the country, outside of Czechoslovakia, did not um, do anything really to expose his kids to Czech and Slovak culture because it was something that he just thought that had no future for him and his family. It was part of his past. Um, so I grew up as a child uh, thinking my father came from outer space practically. I mean, he was from this place I could not go to um, and I had no real access to that culture. And it was to me, it was completely alien. And anything that I knew about it was, was really uncool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I knew that I had grandparents there and I, and I knew that they didn't have a particularly free or prosperous existence there. And so for me, that was a place that I was like, okay, you know, not something that's going to be part of my life. And then that all changed when communism fell via the Velvet Revolution in 1989. And it gave me a chance to actually go as, uh, at that point I was a student and I wanted to go and experience it. As a university student, I went to Bratislava and got to spend time with my grandparents in their home um, for the first time on my own. I visited in January 1990. I visited Bratislava and at that moment, we were just literally days since Václav Havel had been elected the first post-communist president, you know, just weeks since the Velvet Revolution had all uh, erupted in, in form of totally nonviolent, peaceful demonstrations, but the mood was still electric. And uh, and I got to see Havel speak in Bratislava, gave his first speech as, as president in Slovakia. I was there, I squeezed myself into the second row. I was determined to see this with my own eyes. I couldn't understand a word of what he was saying, but uh, I learned that the crowd was cheering a few different phrases. One of them was Nechia Havel, which means long live Havel. And so that was, for me, uh, the kind of thing that was very powerful to just sense. I mean, I had grown up in the United States where there was no sense of, of change the way it was suddenly coming across Central and Eastern Europe. And to be there and to witness it for at least a short time was, was very powerful for me. And to know that it wasn't just another country, but it was a country where I had family, where my father was born and raised, my grandparents still lived, uh, was just, it was very emotional for me. And Part of what was powerful for me was not just to see what was changing and to think of the hope of what could become, but I wanted to see it before it changed too much. I wanted to be there and, and grasp while I still could some of how it had been. Um, so much had been neglected in, in that country. Um, you know, things as basic as architecture as well as infrastructure. And you know, the place was run down. Bratislava was frankly not an, an attractive place to visit 
um, when I came in January 1990 and hadn't been for decades because of, of neglect. And, and that was interesting to me. I mean, of course, there were things that were going to change and the change was going to be positive, but there was also some things that were going to be lost as things changed. And I wanted to see those before they were gone. I wanted to know a little bit of what had my grandparents lived through, what had my father grown up in. And for me, that was important to see before it was all gone. And, um, and then I was there when the country became an independent state on January 1st of 1993. And that was... It was a second wave of euphoria, and this was a different kind of euphoria. It wasn't just going from a totalitarian regime to a democratic regime. This was going from one where it was already democratic, but suddenly it became independent. And independence what brought a sense of recognition. It brought a, it brought a sense of, um, of responsibility, actually. Slovaks now, not just talking about Czechoslovaks, but Slovaks themselves had the opportunity to determine what was their country going to be like, what would it look like, how, what would its future be, how would it develop, how would it emerge on the international scene, and, and that meant all sorts of opportunities. And uh, that was the kind of thing that really convinced me, okay, I've got to go, I've got to live there. Um, and I did go to move there in 1994, and I spent six years of, of, of my life in my 20s, a uh, very pivotal time for my life to be able to um, reconnect with a whole half of my past that I had known nothing about before. So I've titled the book, A Country Lost Then Found. On one level, my family lost its country. My father lost his country. He left Czechoslovakia behind, really turned his back on it, um, with the invasion of 1968, the country had gone a lot, really, and, and he wanted nothing to do with it. And so it was his past, it was not his future. It was lost to him as far as he was concerned, and therefore lost to his family, to his kids. When I returned, thanks only to the events of 1989 and then the subsequent Velvet divorce of 1992-93, it became found again. I discovered the country. My father rediscovered the country. There's this, this place that had been really, as far as we were concerned, literally behind a curtain for you know, decades. Uh, for me at that stage, it had been my entire life. It had been hidden behind a curtain and I did not know it. It was, it was a place that was lost to me. And I was suddenly, the curtain was, was, was drawn away. I was able to find it. I was able to discover it. And, and so for me, that's, on one level, how the, the title of the book works is that it's a very personal loss and a very personal discovery. And also I thought that worked in terms of my story. The book is not just a family story. It's meant to mirror the, the history of Slovakia over the last hundred years or more. And Slovakia was a country that as far as the outside world was kind of lost. And, and it was lost in larger states and entities. It was lost within federal Czechoslovakia for 75 years. It was lost within the empire of Austria-Hungary for actually a thousand years. It was under Hungarian rule. And, and so Slovakia was not a known entity. It was lost as far as the world was concerned. And so with the 1993 evolution of, che of, of Slovakia now, the breakup of Czechoslovakia and Slovakia now as an independent state means it's suddenly found by the world. And so people know of Slovakia as a member of the nation states. It's, it's joined all of these various institutions in its own right. And suddenly people are finding it. And they're finding it not just politically, they're finding it culturally. They're visiting the country. They're discovering its beauties. They're discovering its culture. And so Slovakia, which had been lost, is also found on that level. There are people who don't know me who have actually already given me feedback and said that they they knew a little bit about Slovakia, and maybe they'd even been there, but they didn't really understand its history. They didn't understand the, the various uh, waves of turmoil it had experienced over its history, and they really didn't know what it was within Czechoslovakia or before that. And and for them to now know a little bit more has been, for for some readers, has been actually quite enlightening and informative and educational. And, and to me, that's that's very satisfying uh, to know that people who may not know my family, may not frankly care about my family, I'm very comfortable with that if they are using the story of my family as representative of a very human dimension to the history of this, this country, then, then I think it's achieving something beyond what it might have achieved just for my own family.